Hey everyone, so you can probably already tell by the title we're gonna be dealing with the MacBook Pro heating issues, logic board issues, and failure. So I have a MacBook Pro, I've had some issues with it, it's 2011. If you guys have already done a little bit of research, you know that that's a problematic year. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's happened, uh, why it's happened, and how I fixed it, and how I've resolved it. So quick backstory, I do a lot of video editing and video editing on computers, doesn't matter which one it is, is pretty intensive on the actual CPU. So here's my MacBook Pro, it's a 2011 model, it has an i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's pretty quick for a MacBook Pro and especially the year. So it has um, a dual core processor in it and it's fast when it works for its year for the model, but the problem is, Doing video editing, it does crash. So right now I have it in a strange, let me just show you real quick. I've already replaced the logic board once in this. So I've sent it out, I got a replacement for it. They sent me this one back. It only lasted six months before it failed again. So it's failed again. The company, they only actually ironically offer a 90 day warranty, but they're nice enough to help me out a little bit. So they're gonna fix my existing logic board it's somebody else's logic board that they gave me for a hundred bucks. So I have to send this thing out. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, but just to kind of show you, this is the issue on these things. There is literally no cooling in the back. I've already taken off the back cover, as you can see. Um, but back here, there really isn't much area. When you have the back cover on these things, there's like maybe an eighth of an inch air gap across the back. And these two little fans are doing everything in their power to try to cool off these two heat sinks right here. So you guys will probably notice these things get extremely hot. And what I've done to combat it and to get it to last a little bit longer is I had four coasters, like drink coasters, and I put them under each corner and it seemed to last pretty good. It gave a bit of an air gap underneath the computer and it was fine the only time well it finally ended up crashing again when i was using it literally as a laptop on my lap if i felt it got really hot and then it crashed so i'm going to try and replicate the crashing solution for you so because i'm just about to rip this out and what it looks like the computer will work as normal and right now it does i think i've shut it down at this point but it'll work until it doesn't work hopefully you guys can see this thing without the glare so I'll get it to boot up. I'll try to do some computing with it and it'll probably crash. What happens is the screen usually does this weird kind of jar thing. Like it'll go from one side to the other. The battery may be dead right now. But it'll do this weird thing where it'll kind of give a bunch of lines and the screen will move over like a third of the screen and it'll freeze in that spot. So let me get it to a spot where it crashes. All it's gonna take is for me to open up Final Cut Pro do a little bit of video editing and the fans will start going and it'll get too hot and it'll crash again. Side note, I did get an iMac. If you guys are doing a lot of video editing, I would suggest going this route. This thing is faster. They have faster computing speeds. I can edit my videos quicker and now we're back in business, but I want to kind of show you guys what I'm doing with this thing. We're going to send the logic board off to get fixed and then I'll show you putting it back together and how it works. All right, let's see how many programs we go can open. We got Photoshop open, Adobe Illustrator. We got music playing. Oh, and that's all it took. You guys see that? Look. See it messing up? Sorry for the glare, but that is not me doing anything. It is cooked. See all these lines? You see this weird bar? That's supposed to be over here. Look, the screen literally just moved itself. And what happens is, this is failure of the graphics card. Look, that would normally be over there. That would normally be over there. So it looks like when she fails, so that is a cooked logic board. 100% hands down, this is the second time it's happened. 2011 MacBook Pro, this is a 15 inch model, but they all do the same. Look, it just doesn't know what to do with itself. <laughs> So we'll take out the logic board and send it off and I'll show you guys that whole process. Super fun, Apple. Thank you. Thank you for making this so much fun. So I'm going to power it down and we'll just get to work. All right, let's start the surgery process. So it's hard powered off, not the way that you'd want to shut it down, but the way that we're going to have to shut it down. 
flip over the computer and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that cover off there's just a series of screws you can't miss them and then there's tons of videos on how to do this so i'm just gonna whip right through it but i really just want to show you guys what goes on definitely gonna want to disconnect the battery which is right here and i'm not some sort of computer nerd person that does this every day i've just done it so many times that it's become unfortunately fairly straightforward for me so you're gonna slide your ram out these two tabs i might have it with one hand there we go okay and this stuff has to come out also so you're gonna unattach this ribbon cable your hard drive i actually put in two hard drives on this thing because i kind of made it to its full potential so there's actually a hard drive in here this isn't a cd uh player anymore so we'll go ahead, you're gonna have to take out a bunch of screws. Just kind of look around, you'll see a bunch of these screws that are holding things together. The fans have to come off. The screen cable has to come off. So you're gonna flip this up and wiggle this out. And again, there's lots of videos showing how to do this. So probably better than this one, but at least you get the general idea. So you're disconnecting both fans. Disconnecting this little guy over here. This one just wiggles out this way too. Anything that you see that's connected to this logic board is going to have to come out. So we got that. We have to disconnect. I have to take off this plate because there's another one under there. And then you just take out all the series of screws. You have to take off the fans like I was saying. So let me get the screwdriver and take all this stuff off. remove all the screws that hold it in you're gonna see all your connections are here so you're gonna to want to kind of slide it out on an angle so that these connections can clear the case you'll also have one hidden connection here on the back hope you guys can see that so right here on the back make sure you unplug that one because when you flip it or when you lift it out this one's still gonna be stuck on there so make sure you get that one and then nine times out of ten when you send this off you're gonna to have to take off your speaker and you're gonna have to take off your heat sinks. So we're gonna take those off. It's really not that much more left. And then we can go ahead and send this off. And there you have it. There's a logic board for a 2011 MacBook Pro i7 dual core and it's usually these two chips that mess up and I think don't quote me but I believe it's this one is the actual one that messes up and the last time I sent this out they actually upgraded this chip to a newer chip they said because a lot of the issues is the chip gets cooked and the internal part of the chip actually fails so these are the two chips the graphics cards and it's usually this one that goes I believe so they're going to go ahead and take this and do whatever it is they do with it. Or it might be that one. I'm not sure. You can kind of see some solder marks from where they did their modification. So it might be this one. But anyways, they're going to take this, redo it. And when it comes back, I'll show you the difference. And we'll put it back in. Okay, so it's been two weeks and I got the repaired motherboard back. So here it is here in the package. I haven't opened it, but I'll show you that. There might not be much to see, but that is that. The computer is here with the missing, I'm calling it motherboard. Apple calls it logic board, whatever you want to call it. Here's the main board that goes in the computer. So let me unwrap this and then we'll throw it back in and I'll show you everything works now. As far as this goes, originally, let me give you some numbers. Originally, the board uh, cost about 300 bucks. It failed within six months. And because I've been doing a ton of video editing and they ended up redoing it again for a hundred bucks. But now knowing that this is uh, a design issue, I'm either going to put it back, sell the computer and maybe get an upgraded model. That's and maybe somebody that doesn't do so much editing can use this one. Or I'm just going to try to serve this as a lighter duty. Now with having the iMac, I don't really need my laptop to do all the heavy lifting as far as video editing. So I might just use this for travel and when I'm traveling, I can edit on that. So anyways, without further ado, let's get this open and get it in. So I really can't tell where the difference is. These are the two 
graphics cards here, it still looks like they're my original ones because you can see the the paste that's still on it, the CPU paste, or the cooling fans go on top of it. But honestly, I don't know. Maybe there was just a soldering connection somewhere in the back and these millions of connections that needed to be touched up, but I can't visually tell. They've tested it, they've fixed it supposedly, so I'm gonna slam it back in there and we'll see what we got. Okay, so we got the cover back on and we can go ahead and power back up our MacBook. So no tricks, the computer's back up and working. I've already tested it for you guys just to make sure. And it's back to normal. So we've made videos on it, we've edited on it, and it's back to normal function. So it's as simple or not simple as what I showed you. Unfortunately, it's a failure in the logic board and you have to either replace the logic board or get somebody to repair it like I did. And there must have, uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that they actually test the logic board before they send it out. So some of the thermal paste that we probably saw on there might've been from them testing. So they may have replaced the whole chip. I don't know. Either way, I do know that it works now. So we're back in business, but this is unfortunately the issue with these things. So like I said, if I were to resume this and start doing a lot of graphic work and video editing work, I would definitely try to put uh, four coasters under each four corners to raise this up, to give it a bit of an air gap on the bottom just for some extra cooling. Definitely wouldn't be trying to use this on your lap in a bed or on a couch type scenario because it will just block that tiny little bit of cooling in the back and you'll be running into that issue again, unfortunately. So that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you found this informative. I know it's not a easy fix for the MacBook Pro, but it kind of is the only fix. There's some guys, and actually I'm probably one of those guys, that have tried putting it in an oven. I don't know if you guys have heard that crazy story, but they will actually take out the logic board, put it into the oven at like 300 degrees for like 10 minutes to try to melt all the solder joints to get it to the solder joints to reflow into the areas to get the connection to be remade. I tried that, it kind of, it worked for like a day and then it was back to its same issue. Whereas this, when I sent off the logic board, when it came back, it worked for, like I said, six months of literally editing videos every single day. So it was put through the paces, it lasted for about six months before it did it again. But when it did die, I was using it on my lap at a hotel and that's when I cooked it. So it was fine until then, but just be conscious of that so that you guys don't run into the issue. If you have any questions on this repair or what I did or how I did it, be sure to leave a comment in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think of the 2011 MacBook Pro, whether you'd buy one after knowing this or what your experience is, I'd love to hear it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. See you on the next video.